European Commission and 24 European countries, that is 26 um, research institutes or universities, and even more with the uh, linked third parties. It is entitled towards climate smart sustainable management of agricultural soils. So you see how it relates to soil protection and soil health. And we are performing knowledge development activities. We have research projects, knowledge sharing and transfer, capacity buildings, dissemination, knowledge harmonization, the harmonization of soil information, soil monitoring, selection of indicators. You will see it relates to the law and a knowledge application. So the idea is to contribute in particular to public policies. So when we started the AJP SOL in 2020, we had no idea there would be a new European SOL strategy and that there would be an EU uh, SOL law proposal. So uh, SOLs are becoming increasingly recognized and it's a very active and intense time for all SOL stakeholders and SOL scientists. And we're very glad to know more um, about the EU proposals. So welcome, um, Mirko. Thank you very much again. And the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the presentation. I'm happy to, to be here. I don't see you all, uh, but I see that you are more than 400. That's uh, quite impressive and uh, shows the interest. I, I hope I will present you what uh, you are most interested in. So I will try to um, to present it from uh, the scientific and research perspective, focusing on, on some specific aspects. So I will go maybe um, a bit faster on the context and maybe go uh, towards the annexes, which present the uh, more uh, um, technical and scientific details. So the, the proposal is for a directive on soil monitoring and resilience. So that's the full title. The short title is a soil monitoring law, which shows the, the focus on monitoring. That's not all, but the focus is on monitoring because we are absolutely aware that it is key to have a, a, a good uh, assessment of the status of soil in order to be able to take the best uh, measures also, and especially at local level. We have a quite a clear view of the problem, that's an overall issue. But when it comes to take action, we need to uh, to know uh, which problem exactly it is and where it is. So um, I would go to the next slide. This you know very well. This is the the best estimation we we have up to now. Sixty to seventy percent of soils are not healthy. Uh, the approach was. Uh, one out, uh, all out, so, uh, taking into account um, all the the soil degradations that were um, uh, uh, for which there were some estimations. The proposal of the law comes with an impact assessment of almost 1,000 pages, which includes, among others, the country fishes produced by uh, by GRC, and there you will find. Uh, uh, a summary and the details on the on the uh, issues. So on the figures concerning soil degradation, not only uh, uh, in a scientific term, but also in an economic term. We have tried, we have made an effort to um, to uh, put together all the existing estimations on costs and benefits, both both for uh, uh, soil managers and for uh, society in, in general. There, I can tell you that was really hard, a hard task because there is very few uh, material available in literature. So uh, I would very, very welcome uh, uh, a, a, a strengthened effort uh, in science on that to, uh, to better estimate costs we had to live with um, half of the costs not uh, for which we could not have any quantification. So that doesn't really help to, to uh, decide also um, on precisely on, um, on, uh, on the actions yet. Uh, I would go to the next one because um, the, we are caring for soils because they are essential to achieve the, the objectives and to uh, face the challenges we have in front of us. So soils, 
We have summarized also in the explanatory memorandum, which pre uh, precedes the, the text of the law. Um, they are essential for uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation for biodiversity uh, to prevent and mitigate uh, uh, the impacts of natural disasters. Um, they are key for uh, future resilience and also key for the long-term capacity for uh, food security and also healthy soils are uh, essential for protecting the health of EU citizens. So these are the, the key political messages. I would go to the next one, please. Uh, just to recall that uh, there was a commitment in the soil strategy um, to come with the, a legislative proposal. This was asked also uh, by uh, the other institutions, by the parliament. There were clear messages from uh, the council and the other institutions. Uh, the soil strategy set a vision for 2050 to have all soil ecosystems in healthy condition, because this means uh, um, uh, solutions in place to contribute uh, to uh, um, the objectives of climate neutrality, circular economy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, next one, please. Yes. So these are the the key elements of the law proposal. You can recognize them in the articles. So if you go through the articles of the, of the law you will find more or less those aspects. First of all, in the green hexagons, um, the scope is all soils in the EU. So all soils, not only agricultural soils, obviously, but in the EU. So we limit to the EU and we don't, uh, don't consider uh, the outside the EU. And this is also important. Uh, the proposal is for a directive, so it has to be transposed, uh, it will have to be transposed uh, once uh, entries into force by member states. And it uh, proposes a flexible and proportionate intervention. It doesn't come out of the blue, it's, it builds on existing policies, which are many, many related policies. And you can also find uh, um, a, a sort of uh, list in uh, in the annexes where you have all the the plans uh, measures and targets uh, and objectives that are uh, related uh, to to soil in the in other existing legislation and the proposal is for a staged approach as i said we need a proper assessment to be able to take uh, proper action but we don't have to, to wait. We have already to set up uh, governance, uh, clear definitions, and then uh, setting up uh, uh, um, sustainable soil management uh, uh, practices that respect uh, the principles. Um, so there is plenty of things that we can already start before uh, and prepare before the first assessment, which will be key for, for taking action. Um, so let's go through the, the blue hexagons one by one. Next slide, please. Um, article one is about the objective of the directive. You, you see, it's a quite complex directive, but that's typical of a soil because soil is a, uh, the great connector between uh, several challenges. So the, the objective is to put in place a coherent soil monitoring framework for all soils in the EU uh, that will provide data on soil health in all member states, including data on contaminated sites. And this to continuously improve soil health, to achieve healthy soils by 2050, and maintain soils in healthy condition so that they can supply multiple services at a scale sufficient to meet environmental, societal, and economic needs, prevent and mitigate the impacts of climate change and biodiversity loss, increase the resilience against natural disasters, and for food security, uh, 
and that soil contamination is reduced to levels no longer considered harmful to human health and the environment. So you see the complexity of, of soils has been sort of summarized in the, in the objective. Let's go to the next one, which is obviously the definition of healthy soil. Um, the definition takes into account of the current status of knowledge. So it's a starting point because we expect that uh, with time and efforts, uh, knowledge gaps will be filled in gradually and we will be able to uh, build on that and maybe uh, complement, improve um, with the parameters, with the criterion. Um, so what the, the low proposal sets is in Annex 1, a minimum set of parameters, we call them uh, soil descriptors, and criteria set for several of them, not of them, not all of them. We will go into detail and you will see that uh, for uh, four of them, uh, there are no criteria for a healthy soil set. Um, we have excluded, let's say, atypical soils, for example, naturally saline soils. We don't want them to be considered as unhealthy, it doesn't make sense, so uh, uh, they have been excluded. We don't want to restore what is uh, uh, in a natural state. Um, we have left, uh, so we have set uh, a framework, but with uh, all the needed flexibility for member states to adapt to the specific local conditions when it was not uh, possible or meaningful to set the criterion at EU level, then we have uh, left the flexibility to for member states to do that. And then there is a def definition of, of land take for having a common uh, reference for monitoring, assessment, and reporting. Second block. Well, this is the third. That's um, member states have the obligation to monitor and assess soil health in a sufficient number of points um, we will see more more into details uh, in the annex 2 because currently we have like uh, 40,000 points uh, assessed by Lucas and some other 35,000 points assessed by um, by member states so that's not sufficient to have a, a proper assessment uh, with a, a reduced uncertainty at EU level. So we need uh, many more points than that. It has been estimated uh, at some three times more, so more than 200,000 points. And uh, the assessment, the first assessment has to be completed uh, in, in after five years from the entry into force. Um, and we have already planned the review of the directive after six years. So based on, on those uh, data to see if any adjustment will be needed uh, with that knowledge uh, at that time. Uh, the commission will contribute to this effort of the member states to monitor with uh, Lucas Soil. So it will continue and even uh, be enhanced and complement it as much as possible with the uh, remote sensing monitoring with Copernicus. Um, you will see there is harmonization of methodologies, so not standardization, but harmonization of methodologies, but we leave flexibility to member states uh, to uh, maybe continue to use their methods but uh, uh, asking for a transfer function, and this is also thanks to the EJP soil for uh, highlighting this uh, great opportunity for harmonization. So a validated transfer function um, to the reference methodology, which is set in Annex 2. We will go through it. Um, 
after the first assessment, every five years, a, an assessment to follow up the progress towards the, the goal of 2050. Um, there is a, another obligation for member states to set up a voluntary soil health certification. So using the data coming from the assessment so that uh, they can be used by soil managers to value uh, their, the, the health of their soils. So this could um, increase the value of the land and of the products coming out of the land because the market may, uh, may um, indeed uh, value such, uh, such an information of uh, products coming from healthy soils. And uh, this certification in link and synergy with carbon removal certification in a complementary way. Next slide, please. Yes, then uh, the proposal also sets uh, principles for sustainable soil management. They are inspired by the uh, GAEX, um, but they are completed, complete. They address all uh, aspects of soil degradation and uh, they are applicable to all soils. When uh, one specific principle is not applicable to uh, a specific land use. This is indicated in a, in a footnote. Um, so they are intended to be otherwise uh, applicable to all soils. And um, member states are called to promote implementation of those principles by defining already uh, practices, but also raising awareness, uh, informing, actually supporting soil managers to, uh, to get uh, information, advice, also information on the funding available to uh, transition to healthy soils. Um, in the article 11, you will find also mitigation principles for land take. So we are not setting any rules, obviously, for a, a land use planning. That would be a different legal base. Uh, the legal base for this proposal is environmental protection, and that's the purpose of this Article 11, where we say soil uh, should be protected as much as possible when there is land take, um, minimize and compensate as much as possible the, uh, the impact on, on soil. Uh, then there is a whole chapter, obviously, on uh, contaminated sites and with the obligation to define and identify potentially contaminated sites, investigate them, make a risk assessment, take reduction measures, a risk reduction measures. Um, so this is a absolutely risk-based approach. Uh, and it is left to member state, the judgment of what an unacceptable risk is. Uh, this flexibility was needed taking into account the current situation and the, the call from member states and from industry and, and, uh, and the costs related to those actions. Um, the, the, the key step is a setup of a register of contaminated sites by the, the fifth year from the entry into force. Next. Um, yeah, so member states, we have reduced to the minimum the, the administration uh, requirements. So there are no requests for plans, for additional plans, but to integrate the existing plans, yes, to take them into account, um, nor for a additional program of measures, uh, but the requirement, yes, to report to the commission because uh, we need to see, um, um, to be able to assess the effect of the, of the, of the directive and to see if this is a, a effective and efficient. This will lead to the first evaluation after six years, as I've said. So just to, to finish this general part, next one, um, a quick overview of the timing two years for the transposition, in those two years also defining soil districts 
and uh, appointing the authorities for each of uh, those whole districts. This is left to member states uh, uh, which discrete district to, to define. Then setting up the, the, the monitoring and doing the first assessment, as said, after five years, evaluation of the directive, start defining the sustainable soil management practices and regeneration practices uh, at the fourth year, then you see the part of uh, contaminated sites. These are just the, the, some of the key elements. And so this, you can see that this uh, law proposal is not for additional burden, on the contrary, is to bring benefits, and you can see this in the next slide, to the different actors in society, for landowners and uh, land managers, better knowledge, uh, food security in the long term, support and reward through the soil health uh, certificate, but also for uh, industry and economic operators, the long term viability of soil resources, level, level playing field uh, on soil management, new opportunities for SMEs in laboratories and remediation advisory services and so on, but also for public authorities, a clear legal framework, uh, soil monitoring that serves several existing plans and obligations for, um, moni for monitoring, like for uh, disaster prevention, CAP uh, and LUCF and so on, harmonization at the same time as uh, flexibility and the support of the Commission. And then finally, last but not the least, for citizens, so uh, which can see a more sustainable future with healthy soils, access to healthier products, strengthened resilience, and also new jobs related to, to soil management. Um, I would stop here this general presentation and if I can share my, myself the screen, uh, I, there is not much time, but uh, let's go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, he wants to share. Okay. Um, just a moment, I'm searching for the annexes to the, the law. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So let's start from uh, the annex one is just uh, what has been adopted, but I've uh, reformatted it for a uh, easier uh, reading. Mm. Annex one, so that's the definition of uh, soil health. Here we have the aspect of soil degradation. So aspect of soil degradation, because we have, uh, uh, for example, excess nutrients also content in soil. We have also reduction of soil capacity to retain water. This is a, a super important link with, the, with water that we, uh, have considered uh, it was really important to, to do. We have split it uh, topsoil compaction from uh, subsoil compaction, which come uh, also from have different uh, have features. And then for each aspect of soil degradation, you see you have a soil descriptor, which has been selected. That's the minimum set, I repeat. So member states will be able obviously to add other um, descriptors, but this, is the, the mandatory one. Uh, concerning soil contamination, we have set as uh, mandatory the, the set of heavy metals that can be uh, um, measured with uh, one test, while we have left to member states uh, to select any other organic contaminants to be, to be uh, assessed, taking into account uh, of uh, existing concentration limits, for example, for water quality and other existing legislation. Um, for the capacity to retain water, we have selected soil water holding capacity of the soil sample. Yeah, 
Um, so you see part A, B, and C, I go, I'm going up. And part A, criteria are set at U level, for example, for a salinization and soil erosion. Well, uh, the, the criteria is for salinity uh, rather than salinization. So we are not asking to wait for five years to have the trend. Uh, we measure uh, electrical conductivity, and then we exclude the naturally saline land areas. Soil erosion has been set of two tons, with, to take a, mar a margin compared to the um, um, reference uh, 1.4 tons per hectare per year. Um, we are excluding uh, from uh, any type of restoration of bedlands, which uh, and other unmanaged natural land. Uh, we don't want to, uh, to, to push and go and restore uh, uh, top of, of mountains where there is natural uh, erosion, soil erosion. But we are focusing where there is a managed, uh, where there are managed soils, which uh, cre uh, generate uh, in combination with the weather, obviously, the, uh, the erosion. The soil, loss of soil organic carbon, we are measuring the concentration, but obviously if the NRL, the natural restoration law will, uh, will become a, a regulation, uh, they will be able to use this, for example, to, um, to estimate the carbon stock. And the LULUCF will also be able to use this information um, for uh, estimating the uh, the emissions, the criteria for uh, organic soils is nothing new. It's just respecting the targets that will be set uh, at national level uh, according to the NRL. While for mineral soils, we have selected the sock to clay ratio. We we have seen that um, very recent uh, scientific results they show that. Uh, um, a corrective factor is needed uh, depending by soil types and climatic conditions. So we have stated this. So we let member states to uh, apply the, the correct, uh, the right corrective factor to this uh, to this criteria. For um, subsoil compaction, we have chosen uh, bulk density with the, the soil uh, texture depending yeah, depending on soil texture, the range depending on uh, soil texture. And then we have the part B, we, where we uh, call uh, member states actually to define the, the criteria within a certain frame. So we say uh, extractable phosphorus should be less than the maximum value. And this maximum value should be chosen by member states within the range uh, 30 to 50 milligrams per, per kilogram. And on soil contamination, the criteria is a bit complex. And I'm sure that we will have to, uh, to develop on that and provide guidance to member state. Uh, reasonable assurance obtained from uh, available sources. Uh, that no unacceptable risk for human health and the environment from soil contamination exists. But we are excluding from restoration uh, habitats with naturally high concentration of heavy metals that are included uh, in, uh, in the Annex 1, the famous Annex 1. Uh, for the soil water holding capacity, the, the member states are called to set threshold at soil district level and river basin, taking into account the river basin uh, and sub basin level as, as needed uh, to set such a, a value, a threshold value, taking into account past floodings event or, or drought so that they are mitigated in a sufficiently mitigated on the judgment of member states. So there also a high flexibility for them to judge. And then the four descriptors without criteria, because we consider that uh, there is too much variability 
uh, either in time or by soil type, and there is not yet sufficient uh, information of what uh, um, to, to fix or to ask member states to, to set criteria at this stage. So there, um, the scientific community is also welcome, very much welcome to, to work, to help and define criteria if they make sense, including for uh, loss of soil biodiversity, for which we have chosen soil basal respira respiration, following also the information from AJP soil, that that was the, the, the one parameter which was uh, uh, most um, monitored by member states, well, only 30% of them, but that's the, the highest percentage. And then uh, obviously, member states, they can also select other descriptors for soil biodiversity, hoping that uh, this will develop in future and we will be able to, uh, uh, to set uh, also a criterion. So the, the criteria are set when there is a critical loss of the soil capacity to provide uh, one or more uh, key ecosystem services like uh, biomass production, water cycling, nutrient cycling, um, and carbon stock. Okay, then we have the definition. Um, yeah, I'm going to finish in maybe in just one or two minutes. Um, sorry for being a bit longer. Um, indicators for uh, for uh, land take and soil sealing. Annex two methodologies, in particular for the determination of soil sampling points. So the key point is here, the maximum percent error of 5%. Um, and the fact that commission will contribute, but uh, all setting a, ma a maximum for that of 20% uh, of the total size of, uh, of samples. Uh, and there you will find for each soil descriptor, the reference methodology when available, in some cases, uh, minimum methodological criteria like for soil erosion. And when, uh, um, so member state can use a different methodology, but then it is required here in this column to have a validated transfer function. Um, so you have uh, ISO standards with some, in some cases, uh, two options when the, maybe the, the ISO standard is maybe problematic or too costly. Uh, for example, um, for the soil water holding capacity, uh, we allow for the estimation instead of a very costly laboratory. Um, test. Uh, and then yeah, I would stop here just to finish with the sustainable soil management principles. Just one page. Uh, but what the member states will have to do is to apply and uh, uh, make fit those principles to the different uh, land uses, uh, soil types and climatic conditions to define practices or a set of practice, combination of practices that respect uh, those principles. Um, I would, uh, yeah, here is the, the Annex 4 I was mentioning, the program plans and targets that are referred to in the Article 10. So there are 14 already. Um, and then Annex uh, 5, 6, uh, and 7 is concerning contaminated sites. You have uh, risk reduction measures. Example, they are indicative. They are not uh, binding. Um, same for uh, phases and requirements for uh, site-specific. And then the Annex 7 on the content of a uh, register, the, the minimal set of uh, of elements that should be there so i will stop sharing i will stop presenting and i'm uh, happy to re uh, answer any question
Thank you very much, uh, Mirko, for your very, I suppose, enlightening uh, presentation. A lot of information there, and it turns out we have a lot of a lot of questions that have come in. Uh, people want more more enlightenment, as you as you can uh, imagine. So. Um, what we've decided to do is, I suppose, split this up to keep it a little bit thematic in terms of the questions, so we're not jumping from from one place to another. And I would ask uh, Claire uh, to to open the questions, and then we will move to Maria Fantapie and to Antonio Bispo as we as we move through for about 20, 25 minutes. So, Claire, Claire, you're you're still muted, please. Here it is. Sorry. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, thank you, David. And uh, thank you, Mirko, of course. So I have two questions to start. First, thank you for showing us the timeline once the directive is adopted. But can you tell us what is the what is the sequence of events and the timeline now before it is adopted? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there will be the elections next year. Uh, so the process will be stopped and it is important it's important that uh, there will be the first reading otherwise of the of the parliament otherwise we will have to restart from scratch uh, but also it's important to get from the council um, some uh, uh, some opinion so we have seen that there are already a lot of um, um, events and uh, meetings uh, planned so namely for the concerning the council there is the working party on the environment but but also the one on the desertification uh, and then the in the under the spanish presidency in the council in december or the 8th, 18th of december uh, there will be a point on soil to be seen if it is a, a informal exchange or something more and i know that um, um, uh, there is a, a good coordination between the, the Spanish presidency now and the next one, which will be the, the Belgian presidency, so that the file goes on as much as possible. It is true that there are a lot of other initiatives on the table, so soil has mm -hmm. to find its own uh, pace. Uh, the uh, European Parliament was really impressively uh, fast in being interested in the file, uh, half an hour after the the announcement of the adoption, uh, the Parliament had uh, organized. Uh, there was a, an event in the Parliament um, presenting already the initiative. Uh, so they have to decide the, the rapporteur. The, there is already a proposal for the Envy Committee to be uh, assisted by uh, other committees as a for uh, advice. So everything is already um, going forward and the commission will be called to uh, present them and uh, answer all the, all the questions. So that's uh, already ongoing uh, to be fo followed up. Thank you, Mirko. And there was one question that was voted by many participants is what is the definition of soul health in the directive and will the member states be allowed to have their own definition of soil health, or is it a unique one for all Europe? Yeah, thank you for this question. I'm sorry because it means that I was not clear enough, but it's I, I understand it's not so easy. So the definition of soil health is the one of Annex 1, the one I've showed. So you have to measure all those indicators. If there are criteria set at EU level, they have to be respected. So above or below a certain threshold set there. In some cases, we are saying uh, we don't set it at EU level. It's up to member states. So member states are obliged, called to uh, set the threshold that will be, will be the, the criteria for assessing if a soil is healthy or not. Um, what we I didn't mention is that is also a one out all out system. So if one uh, uh, criteria criterion is not respected, then the soil is unhealthy. And the rationale for this is that uh, one each criteria criterion is set when there is a critical loss of an ecosystem service. So if soil is critically contaminated, why should we? 
wait for having also a bit of erosion or also a bit of uh, something else. Uh, one criterion would be enough already to say soil is unhealthy. Thank you, Mirko. So I'll pass on to Maria Fantapier for questions on soil district and soil monitoring systems. Okay, so and thanks, Claire, and thanks, Mirko. Uh, so uh, about the soil districts, uh, we are uh, reading uh, some principle on the Article 4, and uh, but uh, we think that there is a need to a uh, better definition on how to establish these uh, soil districts. And uh, uh, for example, it is defined the number, the minimum number, but not the maximum one. And uh, also there are some, uh, some criteria for the definition, uh, which uh, take into account both the administrative uh, um, then administrative criteria and also natural criteria, and it is not clear enough uh, uh, how much is much more necessary to respect administrative criteria or natural, and uh, how will be this established uh, in a harmonized way in Europe? I mean, uh, will be the country free to establish how much, uh, how many districts they want, or there be some um, way? To harmonize this, uh, and, and the other, uh, the final question I have, I think it is really important is about the river basin, because you mentioned on, only for thresholds, but this criteria is not listed uh, among the ones that could be considered for the definition of soil districts. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you for, for this question. <laughs> um, we have listened very very strongly from uh, the message from member states uh, soils conditions are soil conditions are very different in each member state we want and need flexibility to define especially when it comes to uh, administrative arrangements so the organization and the governance so we have set a, a framework that harmonizes the approach but we didn't want to be prescriptive and say this is the, the soil district that you should set. So indeed, yes, we leave the, the freedom to member states to define uh, soil districts, maybe uh, at the level of, uh, of regions or even macro regions, or going to the, to the municipal level. Obviously, uh, if you go to the municipal level, you have a, an incredible multiplication, which will increase the costs. So we expect that member states will try to, to limit those costs and we'll uh, look for the best balance for them between uh, complexity and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, common approach, I would say. Um, so then there are also uh, member states where the, uh, the, the regions are very much autonomous or or not, or they are very small or uh, very large. So how can we set at EU level uh, soil district uh, in a prescriptive way? So that's why we have set a frame mm -hmm. and we leave the rest of flexibility, which raises a lot of questions, but then uh, yes, sure. th those member states mm -hmm. will have to, to answer to those questions. Mm -hmm. And we are here as commission to guide them and provide uh, to put together, uh, facilitate this and uh, exchange uh, ideas and best practices. Okay, so uh, this question, this answer uh, brings to me to the next uh, question, which also arises from the uh, um, from the audience, which is about how to finance member states. How can they finance? Because uh, it is uh, uh, foreseen that there is uh, um, that the member states uh, set up this uh, monitoring framework. Uh, and uh, then the question, I think, arises uh, really uh, simply from the audience that how this could be also supported. It is mentioned that there is, uh, uh, it is uh, supposed to be um, financed by uh, existing union financial programs. But uh, uh, what do we mean for this financial program? I mean, uh, how the, the, the country will, uh, because we know that Lucas will, will uh, follow up and that the countries are supposed also to support Lucas and to integrate this monetary system with Lucas. But, uh, uh, and we are also working to do this, to integrate with the GP soil. Uh, but we would like to know uh, how member states can also afford this more uh, effort to monitor their soils. Yes, thank you for this question. Well, I would say how 
how can member states afford to have more than 50 billion cost of soil degradation per year? That's the main point. And the billion, 50 billion, more than 50 billion per year, while for the monitoring and the assessment, we are speaking of 50 millions per year, okay? Uh, so three orders of, of magnitude less. Uh, so I, we think that it's absolutely worth assessing soil, uh, soil health for uh, in, in perspective of avoiding all this uh, enormous amount of, uh, of soil degradation. Uh, in the package which is adopted, there is also this tough working document showing the existing funds at U level. Yeah, but uh, we expect that uh, member states will have also to find the, at national level. And by the way, uh, what is in the staff working document concerns this multi-annual financial framework, which will end in 2027, while here we are speaking of, uh, of the long term. So uh, uh, this will have also a long term perspective to be still defined. Obviously, we cannot uh, engage today for what will be the, the next one. Uh, from our side, we are also raising uh, interest of private investments in soil health. Uh, as uh, it was committed in the soil strategy. So making the effort all together to, to raise and find the, the, the way to, uh, to fund uh, this important uh, effort in soil assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree your point, but I think that uh, uh, it is really important also to uh, clarify and support I mean, uh, the people who is in charge of this or set it up this uh, framework uh, on how to find this uh, financing in their respective countries, I think. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. the, 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 the last question was about the portal. Um, we, mean, we know that uh, there is a European Soil Observatory and we are also supporting the establishment of this um, uh, portal for monitoring. So uh, uh, it is not uh, directly mentioned uh, when we uh, saw the articles related to the portal, but uh, uh, we think and suppose that this would be the place where all the, the data portal will be uh, established. Uh, so the question is, is this uh, the way it is stopped? Because we are already working as a GP soil and then there is uh, this uh, project that is uh, named SoilWise, which is working on this. And uh, we want to know uh, if this would be the, the force that's supposed to, to store the data uh, coming from this uh, monitoring of sorts. Yes. So first of all, just to, to specify that uh, Lucas Soil is uh, um, funded by, from, from the commission, uh, from the, the LIFE mm -hmm. uh, um, program and other, uh, other programs. So it's a combination of, of uh, funds. So it's not uh, member states directly to, uh, to fund it, even if it is uh, EU budget. Um, and the, the data, soil data portal is not intended to be something completely different and new. It's the natural continuation of, of the efforts done up to now. We will have to exploit them to the to the maximum. Uh, so it's uh, the soil data portal is rather the the final objectives, the final um, result we want from the the, the current uh, direction and effort that are ongoing. So mm, no new direction. It's just the continuation. Uh, full realization of the current efforts. Okay, thanks. Antonio, if you'd take on certification. Um, e so yes. Yeah, uh, a lot of questions for you. I uh, try to group those questions uh, about, on, on, on different, uh, uh, different points. So monitoring indicators, interpretation of the values and, and also certification. So coming to the monitoring first, uh, uh, questions about the number of sufficient points. What what is behind the, that number uh, of sufficient points for monitoring for countries? Yes. So as I showed in Annex Two, we are saying okay, we want to do an assessment. So we want to know how many unhealthy soils are in Europe. Yeah, but then any measurement you have to ask yourself which precision, which uncertainty you have in this measurement. So we thought that uh, the acceptable procedure, that, so the reasonable assurance, if you want, is the 5%. Um, and assuming a 5% uh, uncertainty at the EU level, uh, you get this 200,000 uh, points. 
and I'm sure that on this we could even imagine to have a, a workshop uh, with the geostatistical experts um, so that they can exchange and develop on that, uh, especially also learning from, uh, I mean, uh, getting the experience of uh, Lucas Soil, who is the, the, the only one who is uh, doing the, the assessment at the uh, EU level. And this 5%, is it for all parameters or just for carbon or this 5% uncertainty? Is so it for? In each, in each point, uh, it is asked currently, yes, to, to measure all parameters, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, rapid question maybe uh, about the, the, the sampling depths. Uh, are we only considering the top soil, 020, 030, or do we also consider the soil, the inter soil profile, meaning soil horizons? Um, so indeed all, all uh, measurements are in, intended for, um, for topsoil, uh, except for uh, where it is explicit in, uh, in top, top, uh, subsoil compaction, where obviously you have to go to the, the adequate uh, horizon. So okay. um, yes, but uh, you see we were not prescriptive on the depth of the, of the sample. So that's part of the flexibility and left to, to member states. And the science will tell us if uh, we can converge uh, on something else. We expect, we hope that the, the transfer function will uh, uh, take into account also um, the differences in the depth of the, of the sample. Uh, concer uh, concerning the transfer functions, you said that the, the, there should be validity validated, but validated by who? Who should validate those transfer functions? Yes. Well, uh, for this, we, we rely on the, on the processes, on the scientific process. So we will define in detail a, a, a what it, uh, it should mean, so the minimal requirements. Oh, I mean, I'm sure that guidelines will be helpful on that. And uh, uh, EJP soil and science in general will uh, really be helpful uh, on that. Thank you. I have also two questions on the on, on the strategy for the indicators. Uh, what does uh, a stage approach means? Uh, will the indicators be updated following the outcomes of the soil mission projects, for example, that are currently running? And the second question also, why didn't uh, the proposal include a paragraph on adopting delegated acts for Annex 1? This would allow the Commission to adapt the list of soil uh, descriptors to newest scientific findings. So two questions yes. about the strategy. Yes, uh, obviously when there will be the evaluation in six years, we will take into account not only uh, the assessment, but all the new knowledge that uh, there will be, will be produced by, by then. So for example, also by soil mission. Yeah, that we are also explicit on, uh, on that uh, somewhere in the, in the document. So yes, all new knowledge will be taken into account to review it. Uh, why not delegated act? Uh, because delegated act is uh, is for non-essential elements, while the annex one is an essential element. Uh, if we uh, the commission has the the power to to change uh, the criterion, for example, the criteria, then uh, well, I'm sure member states uh, will, will will not agree on that. So we cannot leave for delegated acts essential elements. Okay, uh, so we, we had a couple of questions about soil biodiversity as the, as the document uh, now focus on soil basal respiration that is not considered as a good, let's say a good indicator by the, by the, uh, the auditors uh, for, for loss of soil biodiversity. So why don't we had other kind of indicators uh, for, for soil biodiversity? Yeah, thank you for this. Uh, I never thought we would have uh, had the agreement of the full uh, scientific community on the choices, uh, but at a certain moment you have to start somewhere and you have to, uh, to have the courage to, uh, to say, okay, we start from here based on the current uh, available information. We uh, got uh, advice, we got uh, uh, scientific literature, we have discussed with member states. We have asked, listened to uh, uh, a, an enormous quantity of feedback we have got. Uh, this we consider is the, the best to be put on the table. 
there will be discussions in the council and the parliament mm -hmm. if there is any any better uh, and uh, change that any change that could improve it uh, i mean happy to to consider it and the same also the, the uh, questions on, on on contamination why only metals uh, why did you maybe include plastic contamination radionuclides uh, Indeed, when you start the list, you you don't stop. <laughs> and if, if the list is too long, then the costs, they go up, 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 up. And we cannot make it mandatory for all member states in all cases, in all conditions to measure uh, uh, all of them. So we let them, uh, let member states the flexibility to decide what is most critical for them. Maybe for uh, one member state is, uh, is uh, PFAS, for another one is uh, plastic, uh, for uh, so it, uh, while for heavy metals, we consider that this is uh, essential. Also, it, it can go in, uh, in the food and food uh, uh, also cross uh, all boundaries. So, and that's uh, one, one um, as also it was pointed out by um, soil experts of Luxembourg, I remember, uh, with one uh, test, we can measure all of them and uh, also be very efficient in, uh, in cost efficient in that. Thank you. Uh, just a last question, maybe on certification. Why, why, do, why do you choose a certification at member state level and maybe not at EU level so that we, we align the different uh, certification uh, uh, systems? Yeah, once more, there are different options and, and choices possible. We have opted for a, um, a leaving the flexibility to member states uh, and uh, the commission will facilitate the exchanges as also we say in the in the document so that we uh, go towards harmonization of that but it was uh, considered that uh, fixing the system at the uh, EU level was, was not the, the, the right um, thing to to propose. Okay, thank you. So maybe I'll let the floor to Claire. Yes, so Mirko, you told us that you were very busy this morning. So uh, do we have time for one last question or do you want me to go to conclusion? I'm very happy of the questions I'm receiving. Um, if it is possible to address the, the main questions or already now, not to leave uh, them for later. I would really prefer and dedicate maybe uh, five or ten more minutes if it's needed, uh, rather okay, than. Uh, good. Then well, I'll there, ask... will, there will be other occasions. I'm, yes. I'm sure, but maybe at another level of detail. Well, uh, it's an exceptional opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. an exceptional opportunity we have to have you here. So I'll ask one question about sustainable. Uh, yes, about the scope, and then maybe Maria or Antonio. Maybe Antonio has the most questions. Uh, yes, there were several questions on which land uses does it concern. Does it? How far does it concern natural land uses? And there was another question on golf courses, private gardens, playing grounds. You know, all these land uses heavily managed. But that represent small surface areas, but are very important to citizen life. So, yes. what is the scope on both hands? Ends natural, heavily managed. Yes. So the scope is is for all U soils. So the monitoring should not exclude the land uses. But okay, uh, the the definition of the sampling grid will probably focus more on uh, where there is a, a big variety of uh, of. Um, a denser variety of uh, land uses. Um, the definition of soil health doesn't change uh, because of, uh, of land uses. It's a sort of a minimal approach. So we are not setting any optimal condition. Uh, and as you know, we are focusing for the law. So the purpose of the law is to look at the ecosystem services that we get from, from soil. So indeed, there is a, a higher focus on uh, uh, mm. soils that are managed in such a way that they, they provide ecosystem services, but there are also, I mean, uh, water cycling, water retention goes beyond the, the managed uh, areas. What we have tried to do is to define soil health in such a way that we are not looking at the intrinsic aspects of soil, 
but the aspects of soil that are modified by the human intervention, so by, by mm. soil management. So that's, uh, uh, that's why, I mean, unhealthy soils is not uh, being unlucky. It means that it has been managed in such a way that uh, it has changed the, the indicators to go beyond certain, uh, certain values. So I'm sorry, I cannot uh, be more specific no, on that. No, uh, you are. I hope it it's, is, it's clear enough. Yeah, for me, it's clear enough. So Antonio, maybe you had questions, important ones. Yeah, I, I, still, I have a question about the interpretation of the, of the results, uh, uh, meaning that um, do you only look at the position of your criteria above or below the threshold, or do you also look at the trend because you may be above, but you have, you may have between two sampling periods uh, decline, for example, you're still above, but you are declining. So will you also consider that situation or only just uh, above the, the threshold or below? Yes, when, I mean, when you analyze data, you, it's always wise to deep dive and look at the, um, all, all the elements, uh, including the trend. Okay, for the first assessment, I expect we will not be able to, yeah. to see the trend. And then with time, yes, for sure. Taking into account, obviously, the uncertainty and the errors of, of measurements, that will be key. So is that a decrease or is just within the uncertainty of the measurement? Uh, maybe you will, you will not be able to conclude on a single point, but overall, you will be able to uh, to show a, a trend uh, which with a certain statistical relevance and, and precision. So I would say that once we have the data, we will have to exploit them uh, to get all the information possible so that there is a, a policy action with the trees, which is consistent out of it. So some, somebody says, ah, but if you look at the area of unhealthy soils with the one out, all out, then it will not, uh, maybe not improve uh, as much as uh, the effort. But then you can always go lower at the lower level and look uh, uh, descriptor by descriptor, which is the, the, the situation and the trend. So you can show all improvements. Uh, once you have the data, you can really do a lot to, uh, to take the best uh, action. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, maybe one question, uh, sorry, Antonio, I'm jumping in. Uh, I saw that there were a number of questions about methods uh, for the indicator. So uh, the answer, and I answered for some of them that to some of them that there would be um, member states would be able to use validated transfer functions. Validated by whom would be the, what would be the process to validate those transfer functions? It, it appears critical for many uh, parameters. Yes, I think this was already a bit the, the, the purpose of an, another previous question, and it will come again, I'm, I'm sure, because of that. Um, and we will, as I said, we will need your, your help, the help of, of scientists to, uh, to, okay. um, um, to provide guidelines and a set for the best way, uh, cost-effective way of, uh, of validating them. Uh, for sure, publication of scientific results uh, could be a good criteria, but this uh, we, we will exchange, I'm sure. That's where the, the, the exchanges between uh, policy and, uh, and science will be very fruitful, in my view. Thank you. Antonio, do you have maybe yeah. the last one? Uh, maybe I have a question about the, the again, the, the voluntary sorry, uh, soil health certification mm -hmm. uh, in synergy with carbon removal. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that this certification can be sold to companies, for example? Uh, what is the additional value of such certification compared to the efforts that are needed to establish certification and uh, yeah or we will we prevent also greenwashing saying that we are um, dealing uh, and improving soil whereas it's it's not really the case or, or, do, or do you handle that yes so well the uh, carbon removal certification that's specific on carbon and they will by the way use also the measurements of a uh, soil organic carbon concentration that mm -hmm. the, the the soil flow uh, soil monitoring law will uh, provide um, but obviously, uh, carbon is not uh, everything. So the soil health certification will provide the, the full context, uh, while the, the carbon removal could uh, be transformed in, 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 in let's say, in money directly. 
for the soil health uh, certificate, it will be rather the, the market which will value land and, and products. That's what we expect indeed. Um, we don't expect uh, a cost for the soil manager because that will be just uh, a system put in place by member states reflecting the uh, not only the assessment but all available data. So indeed, uh, if we only do the, the assessment with the grid uh, of 200,000 points, that may be a quite, uh, uh, let's say, generic assessment. But if we are able to integrate all the other measurements that uh, will be allowed to be to be put together in the, the in the soil data portal, um, then the soil health certification will makes will make much more sense. Will not be a uh, a greenwashing and will reflect mm. the the reality showing the result of a good uh, um, soil management mm -hmm. if i'm not clear please don't hesitate to to no it's okay okay, okay. is Any it okay antonio? Then, antonio or or claire or now you, Mirko said 10 minutes, so we are. Okay. Yes, <laughs> so maybe then, yes, maybe then I uh, conclude. So I would like to thank all participants for their very active, uh, for their reactivity. So we were more than 470 people online, which is absolutely amazing for me. And there were more than 70 questions. So of course it is frustrating. You have many questions. They were not all answered. Um, we will keep the script of the Q&A. It is very rich. We'll see how we make it available. We will, of course, transfer it to Mirko Barbero. And maybe we'll discuss with you, Mirko, whether you want to answer specifically to some of the questions and how we make this available. So, OK, so we will uh, see that. But I think it's a very uh, good script of, yes, what are the questions from the, especially from the scientific community? And there were so many. Um, and yes, we have sent the link to the law proposal and its annexes, and we really recommend you to, to dive in. I'm not used to read law proposals, but I can tell you that it's absolutely feasible to, to go to, to, to read it. Um, so I think we had an exceptional opportunity. And as one of the participants mentioned, a very open meeting. Thank you for that. And Mirko, you mentioned at several stages that you were expecting for research to provide information, to improve the indicators, to, um, well, Help. So uh, indeed, research is needed, work is needed. We will see what is not clear probably for many of us is how do we organize to so that we can uh, transfer you the results in a structured way. But this is one of the goals of the program HAPSOL, but other programs and projects as well. So we will try to do our best. And maybe, um, yes, do you have a final word, Mirko, you would like for us? Just uh, thank you for uh, for this invitation, for being uh, so open and collecting so many interests and, and questions. Uh, really looking forward to the, the evolution and the the exchange with the, with you and the, the scientific community. Continue that. So thank you very much, Mirko. Thank you to all attendees. And yes, we're really looking forward to the next steps and hope to build it 